Hotty ho, you handsome hunk. Grab a snack and gain some chunk. If your day is great or really sunk, we hope to help you shake the funk. So if you're good to hear some junk, buckle up, it's the Junk Monk Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Junk Monk Podcast. I'm your host, Candace Sloan, who you know from Instagram at Hardens and Hard Hats. And I'm Noah, your co host, you know from at Noel Hernandez. If this is your first time listening, let us fill you in. We are watching and reviewing every episode of the USA hit TV show, Monk, right here each week. And we're going to do so while eating a little bit of junk. So me and Candace have got our junk food here, which is actually one big cookie jar. It is a Christmas cookie jar. And we will dig into those cookies during junk time. Yep. Also, you must know I've seen every episode of Monk. I'm a huge fan, started watching in 2007, and for the most part, watched it as it aired. I've seen season one and those we've done on the show, and a few scattered here and there in different seasons. So, if you're ready to start the show, Toby, take it away. Here's what happened. All right, this is Mr. Monk Gets Lotto Fever, season seven, episode three. So, here's what happened. In the opening scene, we see the vicious murder of the Gold Rush Lotto Girl. When Monk is on the scene, Natalie gets recruited by the station manager to be her replacement. She agrees, and after a few weeks on air, she has left Monk to fend for himself. He is continuing the investigation with jealousy and all when Natalie officially resigns from assisting Mr. Monk. While Adrian wallows in his loneliness, the captain is planning to leave him too when he wins the mega jackpot after Natalie calls out his lucky numbers. We learn that there is another winner he must split with, but he is fine with his still impressive $106 million check. However, things turn around quick when Natalie is fired as Lotto Girl, accused of cheating for the captain. When the station manager demonstrates how the ball machine draws the same numbers every time, the evidence is damning. Monk sees quickly a Corona Heights hat, and the logo looks very familiar. The other jackpot winner was wearing that logo on his hat, and the hat that's in the station belonged to the cameraman, Billy Logan, that Natalie had previously gotten fired. It turns out that Billy was planning to rig the machine all along. The original Lotto Girl saw him rigging the machine and got murdered because of it. Then, when Billy got fired, he knew the balls would continue to draw the same numbers since he lost his access to be able to fix the machine. His plan B was to frame Natalie and the captain. Thankfully, Monk solves the case and Natalie's Lotto career is no more. Okay, Candace, what did you like about this episode? So that was Mr. Monk at Slotto oh. Fever. <laughs> you always do that. So what did you like about this episode, Candace? Huh? Okay, I liked a lot. All right. Uh, Monk is famous. Mm-hmm. It's so cute. He's cooler than Spider-Man. <laughs> and the detective is just like, oh, man, my 10-year-old nephew, he loves you. He thinks you're so cool. And that would be awesome if, you know, if you could just get his autograph. And Natalie kind of blocks it and is like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, Mr. Monk is working right now. And he's like, um, let's see, clues, clues, scanning, scanning. Okay, yeah, I think I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> and then he signs. He's like, Natalie, could you bend over? And she's like, what? And he's like, yeah, uh-huh, perpendicular. Come on, Natalie, you can do it. <laughs> it's so funny, but it's so cute because Monk is famous and he, he gets a little bit of a big head, but... Um, yeah. (laughs) Okay, so my first like is actually, in the very opening scene, we see the lady running from the murderer, right? Mm -hmm. It's an actual attempt at trying not to get murdered. I was proud. (laughs) She was sprinting in heels and everything. She was like hauling butt. (laughs) Like so fast. And then he like almost catches her and then she like climbs over that fence and you're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And then he just leaps over it and you're like, oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my, cause she's like getting good speed and whatnot. And yeah. then she climbs a fence for some reason, which, you know, I don't blame her, but take off your heels, maybe. That's all I had to. Yeah. She didn't seem that slow with the heels on though. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I would think, Yeah. <laughs> We were just walking around yesterday, or you were walking around yesterday barefoot. So, seeing as though one single thorn stopped you, I don't know if taking off her shoes would have been smart. But yeah, she was she was running fast in the heels. If she had been yeah. like, oh my gosh, and stumbling, yeah. then it's like, okay, then take your shoes off. But she was hauling booty. She really so, was. Yeah. My next thing is Natalie's famous, right? Her first TV appearance is hilarious. Apparently, they don't tell you what to do, and you just go on there and draw those numbers. 
And she's like, they're like, oh, you're you're on, you're on. And she's like, what? Nobody told me what to do. And they're like, oh, turn on the machine, duh. And she's like, okay, sure, sure, sure. And then she's like, good evening, people. <laughs> Are you ready to play? Then let's play. <laughs> Like people are gonna respond to her through the TV. It's so funny. So yeah, it was it was so funny. And then she turns on the machine and she's like, "Oh, oh okay," and surprises her. And then she draws and she's like, twenty five. She's like, "Oh, my mom's birthday." I was thinking of what month? I guess of that month. I know. <laughs> she's like, "My mom's birthday, twenty five. and then fifty two, fifty two cards in a deck. And it's like she obviously established after she drew the first number that she had to come up with a clever thing to say after every single number she drew. And so it was just hilarious. And then she's like, seven, the seven dwarves. <laughs> she just keeps going. And then the last one, she's like, 17. Oh, my daughter, Julie, 17. Hi, Julie. And waves at her. I was like, oh, gosh, it's Tyra all over again. <laughs> okay. Uh, my next like is... She is Mr. Monk's partner, slash babysitter, slash assistant, slash babysitter. <laughs> yeah, that's so cute. And then that's when the guy's, like, discovering her. Like, he's like, oh, are you a police officer? And she's like, oh, no, uh, I'm Mr. Monk's babysitter, you know what you said. And he's like, oh, you're a natural. And she's like, oh, my gosh, really? And then Mr. Monk, she's like, I don't know, uh, Mr. Monk, what do you think? And he's like, mm, I, I don't think so. And she's like. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? And he's like, no, remember, we have plans. And she's like, me making you dinner and you vacuuming the rug, that's plans. And he's like, yeah, see, we have plans. And then he's like, I, I just really think we should think about it. And she's like, okay, I thought about it. I'm going to do it. And he's like, I think I'm getting those two scenes mixed up. But this is the scene where he's like, no, okay. Okay, no, okay, yeah. No, okay. <laughs> okay. It's like, that's as close as he's going to get. I'll do it. Yeah, it was so cute. Bad Natalie acting is so funny. It's the only reason why I wake up in the morning. That was amazing. I loved it. It was so funny. It it was going to be a dislike of mine, but I decided to put it in likes. Do you mean like when she's on air? Yeah, and she's, and she's like, super awkward. And she's super awkward, yeah. It was really good. And then at the very end, it's like, I think it's probably my favorite part because she's like, keep playing the lotto. You'll thank me later. <laughs> And you're like, oh my gosh. And then Monk's like, what? You'll thank me later. That's my line. And then Randy's like, hurts, doesn't it? <laughs> because my next like is, I put Randy's number came up. He's got this big notion and idea in his head, right? That he's like, you remember like a couple years ago when Sergeant so-and-so, he pushed the guy against this pole when he was arresting him. And he was like, I'll keep you posted or something like that. <laughs> and he's like, wasn't that so good? And Stoudemire was like, yeah, I heard about that. And he's like, everybody heard about that. And he's like, I want to do that. I want to be the guy that has a line. And so he's like, okay, you just got to wait for the right opportunity. And he's like, I'm going to write it in my notebook. He's like, her, no I guess her number came up and he writes it down. And then the coroner's like, all right, well, I think we're done here. And then Randy waits way too long <laughs> and then this other sergeant guy's like ah oh, i guess her number came up and randy's like hey man what are you doing he's like, what do you mean what am i doing he's like that's my line you knew that was my captain he stole my line you heard me and he's like he's like what are you talking about he throw then randy like throws his notebook at him and he's like it's right here look and he steps over the dead body and he opens it. he's like look look right here where's your notebook huh and he's like i mean i didn't write it down i just thought of it and he's like oh yeah sure what's your badge number huh <laughs> Oh, man, it's so funny. So, yeah, Randy's line, he's got your number. Oh my There's another, yeah, he's got your number. And then at the end when he's like, you've painted yourself into a corner and then you, you've kept the case. And he's like, that's not even a real saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it's so funny. Oh. Okay. Um, I thought Natalie was getting makes a friended. I'm not going to lie. Oh, by the station manager? Yeah. Okay, you said that. It was when, Nat this was the second time I was getting mixed up, Natalie accepts the full-time job, like, not to just fill in. Yeah. And she's like, oh, it won't interfere with my work, don't worry about it. And then the station manager is, like, being all nice to her and is like, oh, like... Everyone loved you. Everyone loved you and everything. And yeah. then they walk off and Monk is left in the station and, the, like, all the lights are turning off and Noah's like, oh, no, Natalie's being 
makes, makes a friend, friend in, like how and i'm thinking what the heck is he talking about but you meant by the station manager yeah like i don't because she sucked she was terrible oh, and I, he was okay, like oh my saying. gosh we want to hire you and i was like what is going oh okay very interesting perspective that's funny Right? Because if you know, if, if like, I know I'm watching it, that he's being genuine. Like, oh, people do really actually like you. And you're thinking, she sucked. There's no way. Yeah. He must be lying. Very interesting. I like that. Uh, my next like is, Natalie likes the photo better that's on the trolley car. <laughs> she sees this huge picture of herself, like, laying down <laughs> with a ball in her hand on this giant bus. And she's like, oh, my gosh, can you believe this picture? And she's like, oh, I like the ones on the trolley car better. What do you think, Mr. Monk? And he's like, uh, I don't care. And she, like, goes Mr. Monk on him and starts, ee, 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 and it's, like, cleaning off her face on the bus. It's so funny. And then Monk's trying to tell her, like, catch her up, like, okay, we're going to see this guy, uh, Malcolm O'Dwyer. And she's like, yeah, 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 um, okay. And then something comes, I don't remember what he says, but. Like apartment number 24 or something. And she's like, 24, number 24, 24. And he's like, okay, that's ridiculous. <laughs> and then someone walks up to them and is like, oh my gosh, I'm a huge fan of you. And he's like, oh, thank you. And she's like, not you, the lotto girl. And she's like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. And then these people come up and they're like, oh my gosh, can we have your autograph? And she's like, oh my gosh. She's like, I never know what to say in these things. <laughs> she's like, Mr. Muck, can you... Can you bend? Okay, he's he's fine. He's fine. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so cute. I love the hypocrisy, but it's very very cute. I like the crazy lotto dude, the guy who yeah. was like, mm -hmm. it's sad because they kill him off. That's actually one of my dislikes, but he was really like cool. I was like, hey, this guy's cool. Mm -hmm. He was like predicting everything and like, why did he have to kill him? So he had to kill him because he was obsessed with all the people at the lotto place. Mm -hmm. So he had taken pictures of Billy Logan with the other lotto winner, the guy with the cap, you know? Oh, yeah. He had taken a picture with him. That's why he goes into his apartment, he kills him, and then he takes that picture off the wall and puts it in his pocket. But yeah, he was really cool. Actually, I feel like this episode came on, what was this, like 2008? I feel like the TV show Numbers used to come on mm -hmm. back then and I I loved that show not as much as Monk but I loved that show and it's all about like these two brothers one of them like works for the FBI and the other one just like a math genius mm -hmm. and uh, he like is a professor or something so he often like calls his brother in to like consult on numbers and stuff and Ooh. I remember when I watched this episode for the first time I was like oh my gosh it's like numbers and like all the algorithms he has is all really cool uh, but yeah, I, I really liked him too. And he's like, has all the, and Stoudemire's like, no, don't worry. Like, we're not going to, nobody's going to steal your numbers or anything. And he's like, well, you'd be stupid not to. This is like the most prime. This is the, this is the top of the crop. How many lotto tickets do you buy per week? And Stoudemire's like, uh, 20. And he's like, oh, it's <laughs> really shotgunning it there, huh? <laughs> and it's all like awkward. And he's like, how many do you buy? He's like, I just buy one. That's all I need. And he's like, really? How many, how many times have you won? And he's like, this year or ever? And he's like, Let's say ever. And he's like, zero. <laughs> he's like, but I'd rather lose my way than win $20 million <laughs> your way. It's like, okay. <laughs> okay. So my next like is Natalie getting all up in her head. She is totally hypocritical. Oh no. You like that? I liked it. It was funny. Oh gosh. Because she was, like, being, like, rude to everyone. I thought it was funny. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, it's funny. It's hilarious. Because she trips over the cables and gets that guy fired. Yeah. And she's like, wait, I didn't mean to do it. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 because it's like she's being such a diva and then she realizes, like, her actions have consequences that she's not just, like, like she's just thinking, like, oh, I'm just a big star. Just do whatever. And then once it actually, like, affected someone in that way. You could tell that the old Natalie, like, snapped back into it. Like, mm -hmm. whoa, like, I was just kind of, like, acting like this. I'm not really like this. You know what I mean? Just, like, this glimmer of where it makes it, like, like you said, it makes it fun. Not fun. Like, not that that part is funny, but it makes it funnier, like, okay, because you know that Natalie is still Natalie. Yeah. And she's still a kind person. So, yeah. Wait, speaking of that, um, the part where uh, the guy just fires him because he got in Natalie's way. That was another 
reason I was like, she's totally getting makes a friend in. Because it's like, she, she, he doesn't want her to leave, even though it was obviously her fault. Mm-hmm. And he didn't think twice about firing that guy. Yeah. Huh. Another interesting perspective. That's interesting. I like that. That's so true. He's like, no, no, no. I've been talking about this guy for a couple weeks. Get out of here. Yeah. And it's like just paving the way for Natalie to like be famous or whatever, like whatever his motive could possibly be. And you don't know what it is. That's exactly. really interesting. My next like is Dr. Bell. We see the return of Dr. Bell already. Oh, yeah. Okay. And he's very insightful again. He's like, wait a second. Why aren't you happy? Why aren't you on Natalie's side? Isn't she your friend? And so I just thought just that in general was very, you know, very Dr. Kroger y, very, um, mm-hmm. uh, very helpful in the sense of like, not just like, and how does that make you feel? Like he's like, wait, you're you're wrong like you should be happy for your friend and stuff so i thought that was nice but also in that scene it's like monk's jealousy is like on fire and it is so freaking funny and what i actually love about this is i love his self-realization that what he does is important whereas all the other times that say dr kroger has said like you know what adrian like i know you're sad but think of like all the families that you help and he's like blah 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 mm-hmm. and he's he's done that kind of gag a couple of times where he's like but it's not enough i'm feeling unfulfilled all this stuff and i just really like in this one where as rude as it seems he's you know obviously we're watching his session so he can say whatever he wants right it's like you can't like you can judge Natalie for treating people that way, but like what someone says like in their session is like, you know what? I guess I just feel insulted, is what he says. Like because I'm putting killers behind bars and I'm doing something important. And what does she do? Ooh, anybody could do this. Look, ninety one, <laughs> number ninety one, ninety one. And he's like, uh, actually, that's sixteen. You have it flipped upside down because you can. We can see the joke because it says July, Friday, July sixteenth, mm-hmm. Friday, July sixteenth, all around the perimeter because it's like this calendar, and like we know there's no ninety one day. You know, ninety yeah. first, ninety first day. <laughs> so he's just like ninety one, and he's like, um. Yeah, that's not, that's upside down. <laughs> and he's like, what? What? No, there's always a little line under the nine. He's like, no, 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 the line's under the six. And he's like, and all my life, I've never seen it under the nine. <laughs> I've never seen it under the six. That's got to be wrong. And then the session ends where he's like, and then the other day she's got some kid fired. What is that kid going to do? What is, what is he going to do? <laughs> What's he going to do? As <laughs> if he cares about this kid. You missed the part wherever he's like, even a monkey could do her job. Oh my gosh, a talking <laughs> a monkey. Talking. <laughs> it's like even a talking monkey could do her job. I was like, well. And he's like holding it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> a talking monkey, like, yeah. That's like one of those things, like, yeah, if I did that better, I would be better. Yeah. I love those. That's so yeah. good. And then also we have the scene where Natalie quits. They're on the scene. Monk is upstairs and they're talking to the crazy Malcolm guy about all of his numbers. Then they go downstairs, I guess, and is looking... Because Natalie never came up. Mm-hmm. And so she he comes downstairs and she's like... Uh, Monk is like, Natalie, I'm sorry. Do you want us to move the cadaver? We can move it across the street <laughs> if it's in your way. And she's like, oh, sorry, Mr. Monk. It won't happen again. It won't happen again. And then everyone's like, oh my gosh, who's this? Is this your boyfriend? And she's like, oh no, this is my boss, Adrian Monkey's famous detective. And they're like, oh, Natalie, who does your hair? And she's like, oh God. Um... <laughs> And then Monk walks away and he's starting to like look at the murder and they're all like all over her. Like, oh, can you take a picture? My mom's in the hospital. And she's like, oh, sure. And Monk is just over there and he's like, murder (laughs) or suicide. (laughs) It is so funny. He's like, he's like, you may this this might remind you of the astronaut case that I was a part of. (laughs) Maybe you read about it. It's so, so freaking funny. And then. He picks up, uh, he's like, uh, he picks up one of the evidence bags and it has a number 32 on it. And he's like, bag 32, 32. And she's like, what are you doing? He's like, what? And she's like, are you making fun of me in public? And he's like, I'm just saying, like, you don't have a real job. I have a real job. And this is just like sick burn moment. Yeah. And he, she's like, 
okay, um, I'm helping people. I'm changing their lives. I'm making them rich. And he's like, you're not making them rich. You're pulling little white ping pong balls out of a machine. Anybody could do that. If it wasn't, you would be some other bim. And she's like, some other bim what? He's like, some other bim important person. <laughs> She's like, sorry, my job isn't been important enough for you. <laughs> and you're like, but so maybe I should leave. And he's like, okay, fine. And she's like, okay, then I quit. And he's like, thank God. We'll call the station manager and tell him you quit. And she's like, no, I quit you. And he's like, oh. And then she, boom, walks off. <laughs> so sad, so sad. Are you done with your likes? Um, Other than, oh, I do have, when the captain wins the lottery, oh. it is hilarious. <laughs> Monk is, like, talking about, everybody always leaves me. I hate my life. Everyone's gone. And then the captain's like, I won. I won the lottery. And he's like, and then Monk's like, wait, so are you leaving too? Are, are you quitting? And he's like, are you kidding me? I quit 30 seconds ago when the 54 popped out of the machine. <laughs> and then he's like, you beautiful, no longer hypothetical boat. And pulls the thing off. And he's like, Mwah, and kisses it. And he's like, Randy. Do you still have those student loans? And he's like, I got eight more years. And he's like, not anymore. And Randy's like, yeah. <laughs> it is so freaking funny. And then he bursts down to the into the off the headquarters, like the office, and he's like, guys, I won the jackpot. And they're like, hey, Captain. And he's like, the next time you're gonna call me Captain is when you're on my phone. <laughs> it's so funny. Oh man, it's so funny. And then this is the last thing. Is just I really like the plot. I like the fantastic plot of it. Natalie is the lotto girl. She gets framed. The magnetic balls, mm -hmm. you know, because because the um, the remember the girl that dies. She has paint on her fingers, and uh, so yeah. she picked up the ball where she got the paint on it. So it was like another one of those tie. It reminded me of the the naked man. Whenever the girl's dead on the beach and she has a paper cut on her hand. It's from when those those pictures slid out of her hand. Mm, and yeah. so, I mean, it's like you have no clue what that could possibly be. But when you look back, you're like, oh, that's why she had paint on her hand. And then, you know, the magnet sucks it up. And then every, I just, I really like that one. I really mm -hmm. like the, the clues and the plot in that. So, yeah. Okay, Candace, what did you dislike about this episode? Okay, well, you already said this one. Malcolm dies. Mm, that was yeah. sad. And I mean, like, it wasn't just like, oh, because we liked that guy. Like, that scene itself was sad. Like, he's like, oh, I heard you would take pictures of me. And he's like, oh, yeah, you know, there wasn't anything on the website. So I just got a couple of candids. And he's like all excited about it. And he's like, oh, yeah, I see. And then he's he turns around and then the guy stabs him in the back. No, he, uh, I don't like oh, he hits him with the baseball back. I, I, I got confused with the scissors. But yeah, so it was just really sad. I did. Yeah, I didn't like that at all. It was really sad. My first dislike is Julia 17. <laughs> oh no, she's getting out of your league. She's like, she's like 17. 17. Hey, that's my daughter's age. Yep. No. Nope. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Which, How did she just grow so fast? So I guess she got her license when she was 16, right? Because remember, mm -hmm. last, last, last time we kind of saw her, she's like, I'm going to be 16 and five months or whatever and that was in the birds and the bees so one year ago from the birds and the bees which was season six episode five one year later we're at season seven episode three mm. now she's 17 makes makes some sense i see that okay i know this happens on every episode of monk but just this one in particular i did not like that the mystery was revealed you had you, it totally had you going where you thought that the station manager was the killer. Mm -hmm. You had no clue that it was going to be the boom mic oh, guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so whenever it was revealed, because the because I think Monk is like, what is this kid going to do? What's he going to do? The very next scene, they show him killing Malcolm. And I was like, really? It had Noah going so good. Mm -hmm. The reason that I didn't like it was because it wasn't super obvious. Like, say, in Buys a House, right? you knew that the killer was Brad Garrett. As soon as he popped up, you're like, yeah. oh, he's the killer. So in those, it's like, okay, well then, if you're going to make it so obvious that he's the killer, then just go ahead and show us that he's evil mm -hmm. so we can get on with it. But this one, they hid it so well that you're like, oh, well, they didn't have to show you that. You're right. Yeah. You're completely right. Yeah. That was That's really true. Yeah. Okay. My next dislike is also a like, Natalie being a punk. 
because, you know, it's funny seeing her that way, but it also hurts. <laughs> yeah, I put Natalie Rath. <laughs> She's yelling at everyone left and right as soon as... She does the whole, like, two-faced thing where she's like, play tomorrow, you'll thank me later. And then it cuts and she's like, hey, I told you not to play the music before I waved. Don't do that. And then she's like, oh, sorry. And then she's like, gets off. She yells at somebody else. And then she walks off and trips over the cables and then just goes ham on this guy. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, I felt like it made me feel even better about Monk's jealousy about everything it made me feel better because like I said it's like she was treating other people like that and he was I mean he was talking bad about her but again to his therapist and then just making fun of her like to her I guess that's why they made it a point to say like you're making fun of me in public like you can make fun of me to my face like in you know when we're joking around but like you're making fun of me in front of everybody else but yeah I was like well she's she's a punk like She's getting a pretty big ego very quickly. And then this Natalie Rath happens after that. So it's like she still didn't learn her lesson even after Monk was like trying to show her how silly she was being for just pulling some balls out of a machine. So, yeah. yeah. My next dislike is where is Sharona when you need her? And then I was like, oh, wait, I mean, Natalie, quit her. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie quits. She totally quit. I mean, I know I just kind of throw my girl Sharona under the bus, but our biggest dislike, I think everyone's biggest dislike of Sharona is that she, she quits, quits and Natalie finally quits on Mr. Monk. And it wasn't because she wasn't getting paid or anything. Uh, yeah. It was literally because she was famous mm -hmm. and she's like, ah, see ya. Yeah. That's my last dislike. Um, Natalie and Monk breakup. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you up. said that. You were like, they broke up. <laughs> it's like, they totally did. Oh, what about whenever everybody leaves? Monk is so sad. And he's like, everybody leaves. I should have known everyone leaves. My mom, she died. My dad left us. Trudy died. Sharona. And now Dr. K was like, oh my God. No. <laughs> so sad. He's not wrong. Like You know, it's like sometimes when you're like, oh, well, don't see it that way. And you're like. He's not wrong. Like, everyone literally dies or... How? Leaves him. Oh, yeah. The no. kid. The kid. Oh, gosh. Everyone. You're right. That's so sad. He's a person magnet. Wait, what is that called? Something that doesn't attract anything. Repel? Repellent. Person repellent. Oh, yeah. Aww. And then I think my last thing is I... I Put this under the Natalie Wrath. Oh, because she tells the guy when she he, when she gets uh oh someone's getting the cookie Whoa. jar. So I, wanna, I can't wait. Cookies. I can't wait for drug time. Okay, go ahead. Okay, when she's like, oh, it's not rocket science, and I was like, ooh, that's rude. And then she hops off. Then she's like, oh, I was thinking about um, you know, how I'm getting all these fan letters that maybe I could take some time to read some on the show. <laughs> and the guy's like, oh yeah, we don't really have time for that. And she's like, yeah, yeah, I could just read the numbers faster. It's like. But everybody's watching for the numbers. And she's like, oh, is that what they're telling you? Because yeah, like, that's not what I'm hearing. Yeah, that's not what I'm hearing. And then she goes and sits in her makeup chair. This is what I was thinking of. And she's like teasing her hair a little bit. And uh, he's like, really? You're just like any other girl. We could totally replace you. And she's like, oh, yeah? Then how come the ratings keep going up? It's like, that's because the jackpot keeps going up, you moron. <laughs> And then that's when he gets fired. Because she's like, I, oh my gosh, I can't work with this guy. <laughs> it's like, jeez. So, yeah. That's Dude, a Natalie she, Rath right there. I, I just don't understand how someone could be popular off of being a lotto girl. Do those exist still? Those don't exist, do they? I don't know if they exist in the, like, Vanna White sense of, like, wearing ball gowns and stuff like that. I feel mm -hmm. like they're just normally dressed people. Oh, you know what? I think they just show them on the screen. Like right? they're like, these yeah. are the, yeah, these are the lot of numbers and they pop them up, which I will say that I think every state does them differently. Mm -hmm. I think cause it's like, there's like Texas lotto, New York lotto, California lotto. So I don't think, yeah, it, it, I'm saying it'd be hard to tell like what people do because it's, I think it's local. So it's hard to say like, nobody does that. I really wouldn't, I wouldn't know that, but yeah. All right. Time to move on to. He's the guy. Okay, Noah, who do you have besides your hand in the cookie jar? 
I don't have anyone again. I don't right. recognize anyone. Okay, I'll go no. quick then. Okay, remember the show Timeless I talked about a while back? No. Clay. Clay. Julie's quarterback guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, He yeah, was on the yeah. show Timeless that I told everyone to go watch. Okay, Malcolm O'Dwyer, the guy that we like, he's from Timeless. He's <gasps> the other main guy. So, Clay is like the main, main guy. He's like his sidekick kind of guy. And his name is Rufus. And he's the one that like built the time machine that they travel in. Wow. And so, yeah, very cool. And then I was looking at what other stuff he was on. And he was on a show. He was on uh, one episode of Garfunkel and Oates. And I what was are like, the chances? What are the chances of that? Because this half this episode is about Monk being Garfunkled. So <laughs> I was like, even he weird. didn't understand. He did not understand. Which, why are there so many Simon and Garfunkel references? They're not even that like popular. The reference is a bigger thing than they are. Yeah, I think so. Dude, you're totally Garfunkel. Who are these people? I mean, I know who they are. Don't know any of their songs. Yeah. I just know that they exist. He also made a reference to Fat Domino. I was like, who is that? Yeah. Did you heard that? He's like, yeah, oh my he... gosh, I feel like Fat Domino. <laughs> I was like, what? I looked it up and he's like this African-American piano player from like the 50s and the 60s or something. What? I was like, so just some really old guy who I guess was famous back then. I don't know. Just a total monk reference. It was pretty funny though. <laughs> just yeah. to see his picture was like... Oh my gosh, it was it was cute. Look up Fat Domino. <laughs> okay, and then also, um, oh, I forgot to say, Malcolm O'Dwyer is his name on the show. Mm-hmm. He's played by Malcolm Barrett, so they used his same name. Thought that was interesting. Oh yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, because I clicked up on the yeah, I clicked up, I clicked oh, up on oh, the oh yeah yeah that's right that's yeah. right. And then he's also on an episode of The Office. He's on the final episode of The Office as Stanley's replacement. They're, like, trying to, like, make the office look better. So they replace Stanley with this guy. <laughs> so it's really funny. It's pretty funny. Okay, the next person is Gregory. I do not know how to say his name. It's J-B-A-R-A. Jabara? Gregory Jabara. He played the station manager, whose name was Stan Lawrence. He was on Grounded for Life, Malcolm in the Middle, Drew Carey, uh, an episode of Frasier. And then I knew him from Friends... Which is one of my, I'm I'm a super fan of Friends, guys. And one of my favorite all-time scenes from Friends is when Joey goes on Pyramid. Gregory Jabara is his partner, right? You Have you seen Pyramid, the mm-hmm. show Pyramid? No. Dang it, we need to watch that. It stars Michael Strahan. He's the host now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. so they have to guess what the word is on the screen. Right? Mm-hmm. Like the word, we see the word and then they have to present the word. And so Joey's a celebrity on Friends, right? Because he's on Days of Our Lives. Okay, yeah. So Gregory Jabara is his partner. So, you know, the station manager uh-huh, is his partner. Uh-huh. And so it's so funny. So I, I found the little script of it because I just had to read it. I love this. So on the game show Pyramid, Joey's partner, Gene, gets the word cream. So he has to describe it for Joey. He says, You put this in your coffee. And Joey says, a spoon, your hands, your face. And he says, it's white, paper, snow, a ghost. (laughs) And he says, it's heavier than milk, a rock, a dog, the earth. (laughs) And Gene says, okay, pass, pass, pass. And then he gets the word mayonnaise. And he says, you put this in a sandwich. And Joey says, salami, anchovies, jam. (laughs) And Gene says, it's white. And Joey says, paper, snow, (laughs) a ghost. And then Gene says, it's made from eggs. And Joey says, chickens? (laughs) so stupid and so yeah i just remember this guy who's just like wow he's an idiot <laughs> it is so freaking funny so yeah that's gregory jabara who played the station manager it's it's heavier than milk a rock a dog the earth <laughs> oh man it's so funny okay and my last person is greg pitts so we have two gregs interesting but he played billy logan the murderer He was on an episode of The Resident, Modern Family, Last Man Standing, Melissa and Joey, but I recognized him. I actually, honestly, I wrote this down a few weeks ago because I was still watching Sister, Sister a few weeks ago. I'm done with it now, but he was on. So in the final season of Sister, Sister, they go to college. So the whole thing, the whole time they're in high school, the final, you know, they had to do the like final season. They're in college. You know, it's a totally like weird, different kind of show. Mm -hmm. So first off. 
the so the girls go to college their boyfriends are roommates and they're roommates mm -hmm. so the boys the boyfriend's roommates is this guy and i was like whoa this guy looks so familiar where is this guy from so i looked up his imdb and i saw he's on mr monkey's lotto fever and i was like oh my gosh i gotta save that so then you go into the other room and the girls have a roommate no the girls are each other's roommates but their best friend mm -hmm. she has a roommate and she's rachel harris who's the killer on mr monk and the secret santa okay remember the lady yeah, uh, yeah. alice wintergreen oh yeah so i was like this very it was like the season premiere and i was like whoa He's on Monk. They're opposite. They're both of their roommates were on the killers on an episode of Monk. And I was like, this is so weird. So I wrote it down. And so now I just saved it for this very moment. So both college roommates on Sister Sister were killers on Monk. Wow. Foreshadowing. Ooh. No, I'm just kidding. What? <laughs> <laughs> if it would have lasted longer, I'm just saying. They could have all died. <laughs> Who knows how it could have gone. But yeah. So that is actually my last person for He's the Guy. I'm done. Okay. Junk time. Welcome back to my favorite time in yours of the show where me and Candace eat junk. Candace, are you ready for our cookies? I am. And we got milk, guys. I know. We totally got milk. Okay, ready? Oh, oh I was, didn't make the sound. Oh, literally no. every other time it's making the sound. Here. Ooh, beautiful music. I loved it. So I got this really cool cookie jar at an estate sale. And Toby said I could buy it. If I fill it up with cookies for him. So I made some fresh cookies last night. They are chocolate chip. We have our milk. I shall dunk. You're dunking? Okay. Yeah. I should probably dunk too. Well, I like to dunk just in case they're like a little bit hard, you know? I like to soften them up. Oh, so. you're letting it soak. I see. I see. Yeah. Remember, guys, I don't like hard cookies. So yeah. anything that makes them soft, soggy, moist, <laughs> I'm on it. Okay. Mmm. Really good. I'm digging it, Candace. I'm not going to lie. I like it. We actually ate these cookies last night while we watched this episode. Well, this is... It's bringing back memories. I usually don't like cookies that are not straight out of the oven, but this is good. All right. I have, two, I have two reveals for you today. Okay, go ahead. Okay, first one is we got some new merch. What? Yes. It's right there. <gasps> Oh, are these coasters? They're stickers. Oh, they look like coasters. Look at it. They do look like coasters, but they're stickers. <laughs> okay, my first thought was stickers because they look like stickers, but... Oh my gosh. Can I open them up? Yeah, sure. So it's actually a three-pack. It comes in a set of three. They are our logo stickers on one. And then two creations by Lindsay Chambers on the other ones. It's the ones of our Funko Pops. And it says Junk Mug Podcast on it. And then we have the one with our orange background. That's a pic another drawing of the back of us that says Junk Mug Podcast. Wow. So yeah, Lindsay was so kind enough to let us use her design. So we put them on some stickers and we sent some to her. And she got no them. No way. Yeah, a couple weeks ago. So I'm going to post, I'll post her little screen grab shout out to us. But yeah, so if you guys want some cool Junk Monk stickers, yeah, this is they're going to be on our so store. so cool. I love it. Okay, so that's our first reveal. Okay. Okay. I'm excited for our second um, one now. Okay, well, the I'm going to ask our question first because I haven't even got to our question. So. Oh, okay, go ahead. Uh, have you ever been asked for your autograph? <laughs> By you, yes. <laughs> <laughs> to sign our stuff. Okay. So actually, last month's winner of the Mystery Monk Box was Sam Workman. Mm -hmm. And he sent us a DM like, oh gosh, I'm so excited that I won. And he also asked to for us to sign something to make sure that we signed something and put it in the box so that he could have it. And as you know, we always sign a monk disc yes. and put it in the box. So I was like, hey, we got you, bro. We sign a monk disc and put it in there. And he said, okay, perfect. So, technically, we have been asked for our autographs. Aww. And that's very cool. So, thanks, Sam, for supporting us, supporting the show, and entering to win the Monk Box. That was a pretty good one. It came with, like, a, a Natalie Power Drill. It came with a Monk Canvas. What? So, you could paint. And, yeah, it came with a lot of good stuff. So, 
All right. So my next question slash reveal is, have you ever done scratch-offs before? No. <laughs> like lottery scratch-offs? No. Isn't that like to... <gasps> what if we win? Well, we're about to find out. Okay, when we just play pulled out. Tic Tac Snow. Oh my gosh. I, I never really understand the lottery very well. So that's what you were getting from the grocery, from the gas station. Gas station. Yeah. And we just happen to be sitting by some coins, so. Top prize is $500. All right, well, let's see if we win. Gimme. So, every every scratch-off is different, so you have to read, reveal three matching symbols in any one row, column, or diagonal line win the prize. So, basically, you're just playing tic-tac-toe. Okay. I'm so, ready. okay, here you go first. So okay, I'll go first. You. All right, people, we have a sled. Okay, one we sled. We have one sled. Sled, a bow, a drum. Oh, shoot. Things aren't looking too good, Candace. Oh, no. I've gotten four out of the six, out of the nine, and they're, they're all different. They're all different. Okay. So that... So our only hope is yeah. two straights. Or a cane right there and a cane right there. Okay, and a diagonal. Okay, well, it's still looking good. It's still looking still good. Looking not too shabby. Okay, diagonal's dead. Okay, diagonal is officially dead. Okay, so then go for that snowflake, right? No, not that one. Yeah, yeah, that, that one, yeah. Okay, my hopes and dreams are being crushed. Okay, all right. So we basically only have this one, one has more chance. The candle. Candle, candle, candle. We have one more chance. It's a star. Okay. Oh, well, no. We lost. lost. Dang. There's two stars right there. Stupid candle. Dang, that sucks. I okay. Want it. Wait, what is the prize? Well, there's. Do I scratch it off? Oh, we forgot to scratch the prize off. Okay, what would have been Was the prize? I supposed to do that first. Yeah. A dollar. Dang, they couldn't even give you a dollar? What no. a bunch of cheapskates. Okay. For real. Let's see my prize. Oh, gosh. This is why you don't do the prize first. Candace, what'd you get? A hundred. A hundred dollars? Yeah. <gasps> so, that means I have to get three in a row, which is oh, Candace, unlikely, God. but... Okay, we lost a straight already. We've lost another straight <laughs> already. Candace, we're being punked. We've lost another straight, and... Oh. Did we lose? We did lose. I almost did get three in a row, though. That was bows. Oh, my god! I had two bows and a tree. I had that same thing right here with the stars. Dang, we lost. Oh. That stinks. I hate my life. Dang it. Well, that was anticlimactic. I know. Imagine if we won $500. That would have been sick. Oh, you my You got gosh. the $1 one, so... No, I know. That's true. That's how I gamble, though. I, when I go to Windstar, this is what I literally do. We sit... Okay, Toby's actually pretty good at it. Well, I mean, good at it. It's luck. Mm -hmm. But what he does is he takes a $20 bill, sticks it in the machine, and he plays off that same $20 bill when he gets above... Right? If he, I mean, if he loses all 20 then it's like, okay, he has to start over. But usually, when he gets up, he will cash out... And put those, like, slips in his pocket. So, like, $5 here, $10 there. Just, like, little, you know, wins. And he continues to play off the same $20 bill. Mm -hmm. And, you know what I mean? So, he gains, like, a little bit more than he, he'll cash out. And then he has those other slips in his pocket where he's got, you know, $2, $5, $10. So, then, really, he's, like, he pretty much always leaves with more. with more money because of how he plays it's very it's a very smart way to play and also i like he plays like 25 cent bets and i mm -hmm. do like the pennies and the nickels which don't pay out like at all but i get to play for like you know a long time because i'm just like bet penny 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 so that's how i do it and then my thing is actually the blackjack tables I like to play blackjack, so I just sit there, and I'm all Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> I actually have never seen Ocean's Eleven. Do they even play poker in that? I think, yeah. I feel like they do, right? I think in uh, Ocean's Twelve, they rob a casino, so. Yeah, so, right, so I feel, like, all cool and suave, and it's usually a bunch of, like, grown men around me, mm -hmm. and I'm just sitting there, and I'm like, hit me. <laughs> and then when you want to stay, you wave your hand, and then they just know, you know, because I mean, that's how you play. But they just know. And so, yeah, it's very fun. And I usually, uh, I don't, I think maybe one time I walked away at a loss from a blackjack table because I usually just place $5 bet, $5 bet, $5 bet. And it's like, you either win or you lose. So they either take it the next time you get it. Yeah. Next time you so usually I, I walk away when I'm up about 20, 25 bucks. And then I'm like, all right, made some money off blackjack. But 
yeah. So, I mean, we don't do it all the time. Just, um, but yeah. When you do. Yeah. Also, fun fact, um, you cannot use a credit card to buy lottery stuff, which makes total sense because then people would just go into debt using their credit cards to... What? Like if I could, ma- if like if I could buy scratch offs with my credit card, I could just buy ten thousand dollars worth of scratch offs, take them home, win a jackpot, oh. and then go buy right, and then go pay it off, and then go pay it off, pay off my credit card. So, but it stops you because if you have if you have a debit or cash, it's like well I have to use my own ten thousand dollars, which again, but wouldn't you still win technically, like? Oh, no, I guess that's not true because not every single roll at a gas station necessarily has the jackpot Mm -hmm. because these cards are like all over the state. So just because, say, the top prize is 500, it's not like if we bought 500 from that store, we would be guaranteed to win $500 because those could be at the gas station across the street. Yeah. So, yeah, it's true. But yeah, so uh, don't go into debt, guys. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Long story short. Um, there's a YouTuber. You probably know who he is. Mr. Beast? Yes. Right. Crazy, crazy rich guy. He bought a million dollars worth of lottery tickets. Really? What happens? Um, I think he lost like $300,000. What? Are you kidding me? 720 grand was how much they made off of it. Of a million dollars. So he lost... About three hundred thousand dollars. Oh my gosh! Scam. Well, I guess it's like I said. Like it doesn't matter how much m- money you spend, you're still not guaranteed to win. That's what. That's uh, crazy, what's his though. name? The. Stoudemire. Yeah, he's like, oh, you're all shotgun into there. <laughs> See if I's twenty. You're never guaranteed to win. All right, junk time is over, guys. Drunk time. All right, guys, junk time is over. <laughs> Plot holes. All right, Noah, do you have any? I do. Sweet. Okay, let's see them. All righty. Even if you do know the numbers to the lotto, can you type in your numbers and be like, okay, I want this number, this number, this number, and this number? Mm-hmm. You do that? If you go to the gas station and you want to play the lottery, like the big jackpot lottery, mm-hmm. they can either give you a random car, like a random thing, like... Give me 20 lotto tickets, which is, I'm assuming when you buy 20, that, that's what Stottlemyre does. Mm-hmm. He has the cashier just print out the numbers. Mm-hmm. And then if you want specific numbers, like Mr. Monk and the Paper Boy, where Kevin chooses his numbers and he goes and says, give me a lotto ticket. I want this number, this number of all the streets he lives lived on. Right. So, yes, that's what you're asking, right? Can you actually choose your numbers? Yeah. So if you know what the lotto numbers do, are going to be. Yeah. You can go and choose your specific numbers, yeah. Or you can just get them drawn for you. Okay, so the station manager thinks Natalie is a police officer. No She was wearing a purse. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, she looks a thousand percent more like a babysitter right now than she does a cop. So I I just thought that was funny. And then my next one is, they don't give you a script, like... They don't give you a script of what to say. He's like, oh, it's not rocket science. You just turn on the machine. You just read the numbers out of the balls or whatever. No, he said, he said, if there was a script, we'd all be rich. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so true. That's funny. Yeah. But still, it's like, so you're telling me nobody taught her how to turn the machine on. Nobody told her what to say. Like, hi, I'm Natalie Teeger. Or to not say her name or to say, like, no. There, there's no way you would just go on air completely yeah, unprepared. Yeah, they, they probably, like, real life, they have a script that says, okay, tonight's numbers are, blank, 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 you know? Yeah. And they didn't have, like, a rehearsal or a run-through, yeah. nothing. Yeah, no, that's not true. Okay. Fake news. Okay, my next plot hole is whenever the, the first lotto girl, when she was stabbed to death, and they found, like, the two puncture wounds, like, two two and two oh, yeah. on all different parts and they were like so she was stabbed six times i was like obviously those holes are right next to each other i, I don't know i just put duh it was scissors i don't see that i wasn't paying attention but 
but yeah, you go, Candace. <laughs> no, but I honestly like because I honestly didn't remember that she got stabbed with scissors. I just saw the puncture wounds, and they tried to say like, oh, she got stabbed two times on her chest, two times in the back, and two times in the gut or something, and it was obvious like there was. They were equidistant things. Like, I didn't know they was going to be scissors. I was like, it obviously is like some type of, like, prong or something. Like, she wasn't stabbed six times. So, I don't know. I just put duh scissors. Okay. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Okay. My next plot hole is Natalie's performance was terrible. How did she get a permanent job? Oh, yeah. How did anyone like that? Oh, 52. You do cards in a deck. Like, super awkward. And she's like, like, 32. 32 teeth. <laughs> <laughs> that was so good. She's like, so awkward. Let's play the jackpot. <laughs> she's like, Are you ready to play? Then let's play. <laughs> How could someone be like, oh my gosh, she's so fun. Yeah, it, it, no, that's so true. If we were watching, like, it would be like Tyra pulling the lot of numbers. <laughs> Tyra. <laughs> and we would just be like, um, what is happening? Tyra. <laughs> Guys, Dance with the Stars, she messes up a lot. I know. And it's funny. She but really we would does. never call home about it like, hey, Tyra was great. We'd be like, did you see her messing up? Go watch it. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Like, nobody wants to be like the laughing stock of the lotto. So, yeah, there's no, I don't think so. Thank you. My next one is she has to buy all of her own ball gowns. She's like, Mr. Monk, I have to go buy. I have to go shopping. I've worn the same blouse three times. I'm like, for one, you ever wore a blouse? <laughs> for, th- for two, you wore the same blouse three times? No. <laughs> and then again, they make her buy her own? That's dumb. Yeah. You're like. Right. I mean, I, I understand, like, wearing your own, like, like, I understand wearing your own clothes. But when you're making me have to wear ball gowns, is that right to make me have to buy my own ball gowns? Yeah, you know what no. I mean? If they're like, oh, just bring your own clothes from home. Well, I don't have a hundred ball gowns. Like the bachelorette or something. They're like, that's not even the same thing. Yeah, no, it's not the same thing. Because on The Bachelorette, they do have to bring their own dresses. Yeah, it's but not the same thing. again, that's, yeah, no. They're they're paying you. It's like wardrobe. It's literally wardrobe. Yeah. You work for this place. And because I, I don't know, I'm confused because I know that news anchors bring wear their, their own, own clothes. But that's like different because that's expensive stuff. My but Oh, uh, yeah. But they can wear... I don't know. Because it's like a standard thing, though, that you have to wear your ball gown. Right? Yeah. Seems like a standard thing. Yeah. Like, you would pay for that expense. Like, it's not like she gets to keep the ball gown. It's like, literally, this is like a... This is like a one-minute segment on air every day. This is not like I have to have blazers and I have to have a suit yeah. for an hour plus every day at work. Mm-hmm. And I have to walk around in this like, no, it's like I wear my normal clothes. I come in, throw on one of your ball gowns, do my spiel, put my regular clothes back on and I'm done. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I just feel like that's weird. It's, it's just weird to me. but yeah. That is weird. Okay. Um. So last night we were watching Mr. Monk and the Missing Granny from season two. And I was thinking... Monk trying to get his badge back is stupid. Okay. He's literally a cop, but he doesn't have to file paperwork. I my the only rebuttal I could think of is that he can get into other places being like, Here, here's my badge. And that's it. Yeah. That he I think he enjoyed being a cop and so that's what he's he's trying to find that again. Even though he might have it better right now, he doesn't like realize maybe. Or there's just something... Because what I never understood about it is he wants to wear a... Like, he wants to wear a uniform again. Mm-hmm. Like, he's not... Go- he doesn't seem to be going after, like, I want Captain Stottlemyre's or Randy's type of job. Uh-huh. He always seems to put on his uniform. Like, he wants to be a beat cop again, which is not what he does. He's a detective. Like Randy and the captain. So, yeah. It is confusing. But... That's all I had. Go okay. ahead, Candace. All right. This is another, this is kind of a, an overarching theme just like that. Okay, so they make a point to say, 
they're making dinner and vacuuming the rug. And that's their plans for Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So what is their situation? Like, so she gets paid. Like, because remember in the, oh, in in the, um, was it last episode with the paycheck? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Yeah, With the genius. Where she's like, no, Mr. Monk, we spent like seven hours reorganizing the utensil drawer. Like that was work. So whenever he makes dinner, like whenever she makes dinner for them, she's also working and he's vacuuming the rug. Like she's like, like she said, what did she say? His babysitter slash assistant slash yeah, here, something else slash babysitter. Um, partner? Because he's like, oh, that must oh. be your partner. She's oh. like, yeah, I'm his partner slash babysitter slash assistant slash babysitter. Yeah. So like he doesn't need assistance to make dinner and... Or he doesn't even need assistance to organize the drawer. Like, he would do that himself. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, because we've talked about before, like, well, she's not with him all of the time because she has her own time off. She, like, does her own things. But it's like, Wednesday night, they are scheduled to make dinner together, and he pays her for that. Yeah. She's, like, legit a babysitter. I don't know. It's just, you know what I mean? It's just like one of those things where like, where, what are they doing when he doesn't have a case? Like they're always together. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. All right. So, okay. My last one is, it's kind of sketch that Monk didn't think that Leland winning the lottery when Natalie was the new lotto girl was sketch. Where like other things happen on Monk and they're, everyone's just like, yep, you know, that's, you know, that's what happens. You know, you get your neck snapped by a scarf or something. And he's like, I mean, what are the chances of that though? It's mm. like a million to one. Like, what are the chances that an elephant steps on someone's head? They're a million to one. It's like these like accidents that happen, but he didn't think that it was, wait, it's a million to one that Natalie just became the lotto person and then Captain wins the lottery. He didn't seem he to trust think them, that. Candace. No, 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 no. I'm not saying I'm not saying that he thought there was something wrong with like that he, they cheated. That he just thought, well, I mean, it's not impossible. Like, well, yeah, it's not impossible, but it, your detective red flag should go way off. Yeah. Not that they're cheating, but that something else is going on when the lottery girl died, right? Because you're investigating a murder mm-hmm. of a lottery girl, mm-hmm. and then. Your best friend wins the lottery when your other best friend is the lottery girl. Like, this, there's just too many coincidences there for him to think. Because that could have been a whole other storyline. Like, wait, what's going on? You, you know, like a yeah, little one. Yeah, like, yeah. wait, this is weird. But no, he was like, I mean, it's not impossible. <laughs> I was like, that seems impossible. Yeah. So. You know, the tiniest of doubt is what you're saying. I get it. Yeah. And he didn't have any. So. Okay. But yeah. Next segment? Uh, yeah. How, How crazy, crazy was Monk this episode? episode? Plus crazy moments. All right. Out of 10, what? Out of 10. Gold Rush Lottos. Okay. That's it. That's, uh, it's kind of lame, but. Yeah, it's pretty lame. I couldn't, I couldn't have not done it. Okay. Well, I have four. Mm. Okay. Of course you do. <laughs> I have, out of 10, little white ping pong balls. Okay. Mm-hmm. Easy. Out of ten tiny scissors, mm-hmm. <laughs> I like the tiny scissors. Good. Like, do you own a pair of scissors? Of course I do. Can I see them? Sure. <laughs> They're just a little kid scissors. I have out of ten upside down calendars, mm-hmm. which I like. And then my last and my favorite one is out of ten important people. Ah, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll just hire another bit. Important person. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not so important bad. enough for you. Oh gosh. Okay. Do you have any crazy moments? I don't. Okay. Of course. All right. <laughs> okay. So we have clues, clues, scanning, scanning. Of course. What perpendicular, Natalie? Perpendicular. <laughs> no. Okay. No. Okay. That's a good one. Ninety-one. <laughs> Number ninety-one. <laughs> Murder. Or suicide. <laughs> ben Borton people, right? He oozes Garfunkel. <laughs> okay, yeah. He wipes his spoon off after every single bite. He wiped his oh, own yeah. spoon off mm-hmm. after his own saliva. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. And then the last one was, doesn't even know who Garfunkel is. 
thinks it's Garfield and then thinks it's like some type of skin boil that someone has. Because remember, he's like, oh, I think my grandma had one of those. He's like, yeah. And then like on her chin or something. No, they're like a it's like a singing group. He's like, oh, so they're hippies. (laughs) No, because she says one of their songs and it's like peace and love or something. Oh, yeah. They're hippies. (laughs) She's like, yeah, I guess they are kind of hippies. Oh, yeah. So that's it. Okay. Out of 10 Gold Rush Lotto tickets, it's a 7 out of 10 for me. Which is the long, the largest one I've had in a while, I feel like. I feel like so, too. Explain yours before I give mine. My main thing is him being unhappy for Natalie. Mm-hmm. Because that's just so hypocritical in, like, every way. Mm-hmm. And it being like, come on, dude. You know. Right. Crazy mark. Yeah. Okay, I put out of ten important people, I gave him three. Wow. Yeah, I put, conversely from you, is I felt like he was more jealous than crazy. Where, as, like, his other, you know, he... In each episode, we have just different things that, like, oh, well, he did those crazy things because of naked people or because of, you know, Dr. Kroger dying. It's like this time, he was very just, like, humanly jealous Mm -hmm. of her and her attention and her success. So, not to say that that was an appropriate reaction or response, you know, to that situation, but I didn't see it as, like, oh, those are crazy monk things. He was doing those things because he was jealous of her, so... I just gave him three. Rate this episode plus nothing. (laughs) Plus rambling at the end. (laughs) Okay. How would you rate this episode, Noah? I'd rate this episode an eight out of ten. Okay. I really like the idea. Like... It's a really good idea, just like the last episode, Mr. Monk of the Genius, where you're just like, that's creative, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, something having to do with the lottery, like, I like it. It's a good gimmick, okay? And I feel like they executed very well. And, yeah. Yeah. There wasn't very many plot holes. My one plot hole, I only had one good plot hole, which was Natalie's performance being terrible. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, not very many dislikes. And overall, just a solid episode. It was really funny as well. I liked it. Okay. All right. So, I personally love this episode. I was very excited to watch this one. Another fun Natalie episode. Love the murder. Love the clue. Love the fame. The Natalie fame. The monk jealousy. And the captain and Randy were still involved and had their own jokes and funny parts, even though it was very Natalie-centric and Monk-centric. So, I am actually going to go with a 10.985. 9.85 out of 10, Candace? Yeah. I love this episode. I don't know if my, I don't know if my excitement for it shone through very I much. I'm going to be honest. But I was, tr- I don't know, I was trying to kind of keep it under wraps. I just, I'm very excited every time I get to watch this episode. I love episodes of any show that I watch where the main people get to be famous for a while. Mm-hmm. I think it's so fun. I, I can't think of an example, but, it, but you know what I mean? Like where they just have, like how we talked about. They can't be famous forever, or they can't. They can't actually win the lottery. It's fun to see them in those situations. Though. Yeah, and yeah. I love that, and how Natalie just instantly just got this huge ego and everything. I liked it. I think it's funny because. So I asked Toby, and I jotted down what he said because I was trying to figure out like, am I, you know, am I not overreacting, but am I hyping this up too much? Like, what what did he think of the episode? Well, he rated it a seven, <gasps> and I was like. That's... I didn't. I didn't. I didn't judge him. Uh-huh. He said, it "Was like he was like, don't judge my answers. I don't know." But I, I was like, "Okay, why?" And he he did talk for a little bit, but he had a couple of good points. I jotted down, which was, he thought Natalie and Monk were both in the wrong, so it was hard to like. It wasn't like you could like pick a side. It was like they were both just not having good character traits. So it wasn't like. There was no side to choose. Yeah. There was no, like, was oh, like, well, Monk's right. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. even, like, J- Monk was jealous. So, 
you're like you can't even be like oh yeah team natalie like yeah she deserves this because she gets this huge ego and then like see monk's right but he's also just being jealous so it was just hard like to choose you couldn't choose a side so it was like well i didn't really like either of their personalities this episode so i didn't like it you know it's not a moral dilemma because it's just they're both wrong yeah yeah Mm -hmm. and then he also put there was little to no detecting work because monk didn't even solve the case like he didn't even solve the whole magnet thing in the balls the lotto commission did Mm -hmm. because they're the ones that flipped on the magnet and figured it out or whatever all he did was solve the corona heights Heights. ball cap thing forget out who did it yeah so Mm -hmm. he was like i I just didn't think that there was a lot of like good monk and natalie traits or monk detecting so Mm -hmm. that's why he gave it that rating so i was like hmm that was a pretty interesting... I never thought of it that way, but then again, I did because I liked the monk jealousy thing. It gave us a lot of comedy and a, a human emotion. Yeah, yeah. And then Natalie, on the other hand, is some a way that we never saw... Like, we never get to see her that way. Mm-hmm. And again, it's not a good thing, but it's a good thing. Mm-hmm. It's a fun thing. So, yeah. I just... This is, this is one of my top episodes that I can remember. It's a very standout episode in my mind. Also, the summation is great. Natalie still has a little bit of attitude, right? Because she's like, she's like, someone could have tripped and died on those cables. And he's like, oh, come on, give me a break. And she's like, oh, whatever. And mm-hmm. he's like, I told you about her. I told you about her. <laughs> she's just like all pissed off and stuff. And then, you know, Randy's like, goes on about the boat. Like, this man had a boat. He had a, so he's been looking at this sad picture of a boat on the wall for 11 years and you <laughs> took it away from him and you ripped it. He had hope and you ripped it from him. He got, for that, you're going to burn in hell. <laughs> and she's like, for that and the homicide. It's like, yeah. So yeah. I was, that, that was probably one of the funniest stories. Yeah. For that, you're going to burn in hell. <laughs> yeah. So very good. A uh, very good episode. I enjoyed. I love. And yeah. So that's it. Go check out our stickers. Yes, they're really cool. Noah already put one on his scooter. I did. Did During you only put one? Break. I only put one okay. because Toby was like, Kimmy said only put one. Well, I just don't know, like, because so we have so, not some issues with our scooters, but in case we ever have to have, like, a warranty or send it back or anything, I want it to be, like, I don't want it to have, like, stickers all over it and have to me have to peel the stickers off and all that stuff. So, I don't know. I just... It's my scooter, Candace. Well, fine. I'm just saying. You're not the one that has to peel the sticker off if I <laughs> sit it back. So, um, But yeah, check out the stickers and um, check out all our other swag stuff. And enter to win our monk box. Have some milk and cookies. Get yourself some scratch-offs, but don't go broke. Don't use your credit card. Be responsible. Gamble responsibly. And yeah. So I think I'm just going to go, actually, honestly, I'm probably going to get moving and do a little bit of more decorating for Christmas. Of course you are. That's my life now. I'm just decorating for <laughs> Christmas nonstop until Christmas happens. And then I take it all down. So, yeah. all right, guys. We will see you next time for episode four episode of season four. seven. We're, tr- excited. we're already trucking through this. We season totally seven, are, yeah. Season 7 just started and we're already like, shoo! Mm-hmm. We're almost like a quarter of the way yeah. through Season 7. Which is crazy. <sighs> so. I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for listening to the Junk Monk Podcast. We'd love to hear from you, so please give us a five-star review wherever you listen to podcasts. Also, follow us at Junk Monk Podcast on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. If you want to know more about Candice, she's at Hardens and Hard Hats on Instagram. And if you want to know more about me, Noah L., subscribe to my vlog, Noah Hernandez, on YouTube. Also, you can leave us a voicemail at 323-366-0477 with your questions, comments, or just to show us some love. Don't forget to catch up on Monk with Amazon Prime Video, and of course, subscribe to our show. You'll thank me later.